Good morning, I'm Megan. Thanks for coming to my pier today on beautiful Browns Lake to do the second half of my practice. The first half was a somatics practice. You can find that video. Um, <clears throat> but I continue after the somatics and do a standing grounding balancing practice. So that's where we are now. So you're gonna come onto your feet and see if you can track your hip, so the center of your hips, you can feel your bones, right down through your thighs and the centers of your knees and then down through the middles of the ankles and the middle toes. So finding that nice tracking in your line, in your leg line, and feel your bones for a moment. Like you're just stacking your bones like Legos, nice and strong. And then with your eyes opened or closed, begin to transfer your weight from the left foot to the life right foot. And notice when you have more weight in the pinky toe side of one foot, the big toe side of the other, Feel the way that your muscles will automatically respond and turn on to help support you as your weight comes into one leg. So this understanding that our bodies naturally keep us upright without too much effort. And then once you've gone back and forth a few times, find where you feel centered, that there's equal weight in both legs. Bend your knees softly. Feel the, where the ball mounds of the feet are behind the big toe and the little toe specifically, and then the heels, and then rock forward onto the ball mounds. Not lifting the heels, but just rock forward. You can bend your knees. And then take your weight back towards your heels. So you're just feeling the forward and back plane, the balance. So this is a little bit of what we say proprioception, feeling your body in space. And if you're comfortable doing it with your eyes closed, you can close your eyes. So feeling your feet. Your, your carriages for the day, back and forth. And then once you find where you feel centered from front to back, hold that line as well. So right to left, back to front. Now begin to press the balls of the feet and the heels into the earth. Lift the arches of the feet. And imagine you could even take your hands to your outer hips, pressing your outer hips into your hands or towards um, to towards the ends of the mat. So lifting up through the leg line, lift your kneecaps up your thighs. So now your legs are strong and engaged. We want to keep that strong engaged leg line and just take your hands to your hips and gently make some circles with your hips. So keep the legs strong, but start to make some circles from the hips. And notice how that changes the weight. So now instead of initiating from moving from the feet, you're moving from your pelvis but you're still gonna feel your weight go into one leg and the other. If you wanna get fancier, you can make figure eight shapes with your hips. Hands can be on the hips or wherever you want them. So just noticing how your legs and feet respond to the movement of your hips. And then we're gonna take a little bit more of a um, specific movement anterior posterior tilt. So you might want to take your hands to your hips to this one. So on an inhalation, you're going to think of lifting your tailbone up, drawing your belly forward. So the pelvis will tilt, the upper pelvis will tilt forward and upward. And as you exhale, draw your tailbone down to the earth and navel center in, thigh bones will draw back. So inhaling and exhaling, we're just tilting that pelvis. Keep the legs strong, but if the knees need to bend a little bit, that's okay. I'll be tilting back and forth. And then finding that center spot. So we're centered now, not only through the legs and the feet, but through the pelvis. So we don't wanna stick that butt out too much. Draw your tailbone down just enough so you can feel some abdominal muscles holding you. Now let's get into the shoulders. Stack your shoulders, draw your shoulders back a little bit. Think of pressing your shoulder blades to whatever's behind you. Draw the base of the head and the skull back too, just slightly. So now you're stacking your ears over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips. And I call your diaphragm your creamy center. So if you were like a, a cookie, you've got your shoulder girdle and your hip girdle. And then that creamy center, we don't want it smushing out of one side. Draw that diaphragm right into the center. Hold that line so you're strong through your legs. Inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. As you exhale, take your hands through your heart center. Just beginning to inhale, feel the levity and lifting and lengthening. And exhale, hands down. And this is our first in intentional breathing too. So take your time, 
important to find the movement with the breath. See if you can remember that there's a beginning, a middle and end to the breath. And there's a beginning, a middle and end to your breathing. Last one. Inhaling up. And exhaling down. All right, let's get the legs moving a little bit. So we're gonna add to this. So now as you're inhaling, let your weight come into your right leg. Come onto the left ball of the foot, or you can lift the leg all the way up. That's up to you. See where your balance is. As you exhale, take the hands to the heart center. Take that leg down. Inhale, sweep your arms up, switch. So either just ball of the foot or toes to the floor. You can twinkle toe it or lift. Exhale, hands to the heart. Notice when you come back to that perfect space of grace where your body is balanced on both legs. Lift up and out, press your heel into the floor, reach. Exhale down. So this is a little practice for proprioception. Finding, so proprioception is the bigger umbrella term that balance falls under. So if you can, you can close your eyes. Feel your weight transfer into one leg. Sense yourself lift. And as I close my eyes today, I can smell the locust trees that are in bloom. Once a year, we get about three days. So powerful to smell those trees. Makes me smile. Next time you're lifted through that left leg, we're going to pause. So see if you can get that left leg up. You can take your hands to the back of the thigh or the shin, draw that leg in and press into your standing leg. So find that stability. You should feel the back line of your standing right leg engage by pressing into the heel and the ball of the foot. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze through the left leg and then see if you can hold that line. So imagine you've got Velcro between your ribs and your thigh. Keep that leg there, but let go. So there's our hip flexors working for us. Hold that line. And then we're gonna extend out. So keep that leg lifted as far as you can and then press through that heel. Reach it. We're gonna, I'm gonna turn this way so you can see me. So if you're not at the top of the mat, you need to switch. Now you're gonna slowly take that left leg all the way to the back of the mat. We're gonna step into a warrior one footprint. So my shoulders are still facing towards the short edge of the mat, bending into the front knee a few times. Just finding your way in and out of the knee. Keep the back leg strong when you're ready. So when we were doing our arm sweeps before we were coming out to the sides, this time you're gonna sweep your arms through the front, palms facing one another. So as you inhale, you're coming into this back bend and you're gonna straighten your leg. As you exhale, make a circle through the arms, bend back into the leg. Inhale, take the arms through the front, reach up, press into that front right heel. Exhale, sink down. Let's do two more in motion. Just feeling your body move and lift on the inhale. Sink on the exhale. Next one, take it up. Keep the arms lifted. Bend into the knee on exhale. Then inhale, draw your elbows back. Take five to eight steady breaths here in your warrior one. Feel that back left leg. Draw your left inner thigh towards the front of the mat. Lift your right thigh bone upward and draw that hip to the back of the mat so your legs are strong and sturdy. Soften your toes. Feel your weight just as you did in your mountain pose. Last breath. Inhale, straighten your legs, straighten your arms. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Step forward. Come back into that center plane. So you can stay at the front of your mat if you're there. I'm going to turn towards you. And maybe you need to shift again, right to left or front to back. But notice how it might feel differently this time. It might feel different coming back into this space of grace, this, this plumb line in the center of your body. Nonetheless, feel that plumb line. And then we're going to do the lifting legs again, but this time we're going to add a little chair pose in. And we're going to take the arms, instead of out to the sides, you're going to take the arms through the front. So <clears throat> feel both legs. Inhale, sweep your arms up, reach up a little, kind of a little back bend at the top here. 
As you exhale, you're going to take the hands behind you and sit down into your chair pose. Draw the knees back behind the toes. So even if you only sit a little bit, that's okay. You can reach your fingers back. Keep equal weight in the fronts and the backs of the feet. Press into the heels to lift up. Inhale up. Exhale. Sit down. Inhaling up. And exhaling down. So finding this movement first and then we'll add the lifting of the leg as we did before. So you're going to inhale and lift up, take your weight into your right foot, lift your left leg. So again, just the ball of the foot or lifting it all the way to 90 degrees if you'd like. Exhale, take the foot down, sit down into your chair pose. Weight into the left leg, inhale, right leg up. Exhale, so feel yourself from your legs and your feet Remember the exhalation, the sinking, is the ease. Let gravity have you. That's the way I like to think of it. The inhalation is the effort. Press into your standing leg foot. Lift the thigh bone, lift the knee. And reach through the arms, lift the side bodies. Let's do one more full round. Inhaling up. And exhaling down. Okay, so this time, when you have that right leg lifted, we're going to stay there. So I'll face you first. You can take your hands to your heart. You don't have to hold them overhead. Keep that right leg lifted and then begin to squeeze it in towards your body. Also lift up through your standing leg. You can take your hands to the back of the thigh or to your shin. Squeeze it in. Feel that back line opening up. See if you can still. So a lot of times what happens is once we get here, we're trying to balance, right? The head comes forward. So still take the shoulder blades in the base of the skull back. Lift up tall. Take your shoulders back. Breathe into that. And then see if you can let go. But keep the leg there as best you can. Use the strength of the hip flexors. And then if you want, you can extend that leg. It's always fun balancing on a pier with fish swimming around me. Extend it. And then we're going to step that right foot to the back for our warrior one. So I got to move forward a little bit, but step that right foot back. Square your shoulders off with the short edge of the mat. Find that back leg line first, bringing the inner right thigh forward. Take a few bends in and out of that front left knee. Let yourself feel your knee bending in and out. Just micro bends and then settle in that space where you feel strong, lifting your left thigh bone up, pressing into that heel. Take your arms once again, we'll sweep the arms up through the front as we straighten the leg. Reach up, notice what changes in your body, what stays the same. As you exhale, you can circle your arms out to the sides as you bend into the knee. Inhale, hands up through the front, press into the heel, lift that front left leg line, keep that back leg straight and strong. Exhale, drop in. Remember that beginning, middle, and end to breath. You can even pause at the top of the inhale or take that peaceful pause at the bottom of the exhale. Inhalation effort, lifting. Exhalation, ease, drop. Let's take the next one. Keep those legs strong. Inhale, reach up. Keep the arms lifted. But exhale, bend into the front knee. Open up your arms to the sides. Draw the inner thighs towards one another. Express yourself through your breath, through the feelings and sensations of your body, just being present for whatever is presenting itself. Feel yourself from your feet to the crown of the head and from the fingers into the heart center. Last breath out. Inhale, straighten the front leg, reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Step forward. Come back to that space of balance again. So the brain gets to turn off and it doesn't have to think as much. It's like, here I am. I've got my ears stacked over my shoulders, shoulders over the hips, that nice line through the legs, hips, knees ankle centers of the toes, and just be in that space. Feel yourself in that space. 
All right. And then taking a moment, I'm gonna have you turn towards the long edge of the mat where I am. And you're gonna widen your feet apart, turn your heels in and toes out. And just take it back and forth a little bit. Let the inner thighs open up. And you can even roll from big toe to little toe side of the foot. Hands can be on your thighs. If you want more work, then get a little lower down and take your hands down towards the earth. So either up here or down there. And then lifting up, turn all toes, 10 toes, all toes, all toes on board, towards the front, slightly inward maybe even. So it feels like your thigh bones can roll inward and back. So there's this lifting up through the buttocks and the hips. <clears throat> Keep the arches lifted, press into your feet. We're gonna go in and out of a warrior two footprint and we're gonna be pivoting the foot. So think of initiating, the, the pelvis is what's balancing you, but initiate that movement from your foot. So you're gonna inhale, sweep your arms back out to the sides again. We'll go up and out. So roll those arm bones outward, external rotation of the arms, reach up. And then as you exhale, pivot that right foot a quarter of a turn, sit down into your warrior two. As you inhale, drop the back hand, lift the front hand up so that right hand is reaching and lifting into exalted warrior. Take a few breaths there. Acquaint yourself with the foot position Exhale back into the warrior two. Super simple, straighten the front leg, all 10 toes forward, reach up, hug the thighs. As you exhale, you're gonna turn that left foot a quarter of a turn, coming into your warrior two. Reaching through the arms, stack your front knee right over your ankle. Drop your back right hand, flip your left palm up, inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale back to warrior two. So this is our flow. Feel yourself from your feet all the way to the head, fingers into the heart, inhale, all 10 toes forward. Reach up and we'll go slow. Lengthen and lift, hug your inner thighs. Keep some of that hugging of the inner thighs as you exhale, pivot the right foot. Take a few breaths in your warrior two. <clears throat> Can you keep that back thigh strong? Watch that we're not bending the knee. Drop the back hand, flip the front palm. Inhale, exalted warrior. Notice where your weight is distributed over your legs. Exhale back to warrior two. As you inhale, pivot that right foot, all 10 toes forward, hug your inner thighs, reach up. So it's like we're back in our mountain pose, but we just have wide legs. We're at that center point in the body. Exhale, pivot the left foot into your warrior two. Feel that whole sense of self from the heels through the hips. There's where the balance comes to make space in the upper body. Drop your back hand, flip your front palm up, inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale back to warrior two. Last round, all 10 toes forward. Lift up, reach and lengthen. Hug into that midline just slightly. Exhale, right foot pivots, warrior two. Take a breath there. So this is our try it moving. We're gonna buy it, we're gonna hold it. Drop that back hand, flip your front palm up. Inhale into the exalted. If you want a little bit more for the back arm, you can internally rotate the arm. So imagine turning a doorknob and turning your palm outward, thumb back, and then wrap that arm around your low back. Still reaching through the right arm. Watch that we're not bending that elbow. We'll lift up through the side body and then reach back. Hug your inner thighs. Take three to five more rounds of breath here. Feel yourself from your feet. Coming back into warrior two. We're gonna shift just slightly this time. You're gonna inhale up. And I want you to turn towards the short edge of the mat, towards that right foot. When you do that, let the left foot come around, left foot and hip come towards the short edge of the mat, shoulder towards the short edge of the mat. We're gonna do pyramid pose to stretch out that leg. So reach out from the hip crease, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, slide your hands down the thigh. You can keep hands at the thigh. If you do use blocks, this is a great pose for blocks. I don't have my blocks down here today, but you can absolutely take your hands to blocks. 
So instead of rounding the spine, reach out from the abdominal center, draw that right thigh bone back. If you need to bend the knee a little bit, that's okay. You can stop here halfway. If you're looking for more strengthening and challenge, hands could come out to the sides. They could be placed on your back, or you could really go for it and reach forward. We're gonna take three to five more breaths here. Your call on the arms. And exhale. Drop the hands down. We're gonna come into a low lunge on Jayasana so that back left knee is gonna drop. Bring both hands to the inside of the right foot. Another space for blocks. Feel free to take a little bit of free movement first. You can wiggle your hips around. All right. And then I'm taking the thighs, hug the thighs towards one another. Hands can stay on the floor. You can come onto fingertips. Hands could come to your thigh or hugging the thighs really strongly. Reach your arms up. Three to five breaths. Feel your feet and from your feet, draw into the core center. Exhale, take the hands back down. Back toe rolls under. You're gonna lift the back knee, one hand to either side of the right foot. Lift the back knee. Walk your hands to the long edge of the mat. So all 10 toes are facing the long edge of the mat and reaching out through the crown of the head. You may have a little more bend in your knees and your legs might feel different, the two legs. But stay long through the spine. You can also use your blocks here. Lengthen and lift the sit bones and the tailbone. Draw your thighs back. Lift the inner thighs. Press into the pinky toe side of the feet. And breathe with this nice long spine. Next breath out, maybe soft bend in the knees, bow into a fold. Press into your heels, inhale, we're gonna lift up. Soft bend in the knees, reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Just check your feet that were there where you want them for the second side of that warrior two hold. So draw toes maybe slightly inward, thigh bones should be able to roll inward. Draw up through your pelvic floor. Exhale, rotate the left foot a quarter of a turn, coming into warrior two. So this is our hold, our buy it. Take a moment there. Find the legs first in this pose and drop that back right hand, flip your left palm up into exalted warrior, reaching up, opening up through that left side body. Right arm can stay relaxed or you can Internally rotate that arm, so bring the head of the arm bone towards the collarbone and then wrap that arm around, but take the shoulder back. So we don't want the shoulder coming forward, take the shoulder towards the back side of the long edge of your mat. Lengthen and lift the left waist. Keep those thighs strong and breathe. Feel yourself from your feet. Last breath there. Back into the warrior two for a moment. Straighten the front leg. We're gonna come into the pyramid pose. So you wanna readjust your torso so that your shoulders and your hips are facing the short edge of the mat. So you might even have to pick that up, rotate the hips and the shoulders around. And I tend to shorten my stance a little bit. Feet are a little bit closer towards the center of the mat. Lift up and out through your waist. Imagine lifting your rib cage away from your hips, but grounding through your hips. Hug the thigh bones, hug the muscles to the thigh bones, and then come forward a little at a time. Hands can stay on the thigh for more support. You might keep a soft bend in the knee. We don't want to lock the knee or hyperextend the knee, so always keep a soft bend, but maybe you want even more of a bend. Reach out through the crown of the head, take that left hip crease towards the back of the mat. You can even take your hands in there and press it back. Hands can stay on the thigh for support. You can use blocks if you've got them hands out to the sides, on your back, or forward. Your call. Imagine hugging the thighs together, like you're closing them up. Squeeze the thighs, but press into the heels and the balls of the feet, keep the toes soft. It's part of the proprioceptive feeling of feet and ankles. 
reach through the crown of the head and exhale. We're gonna let the hands come down, slide that right leg back so you can drop onto the knee. Low lunge, both hands to the inside of that left foot. Feel free to take movement, use your blocks if you'd like. Sometimes just shaking it out. We get all different kinds of messages. Movement creates information. So staying present for that information. And then you can keep one hand to either side of the foot on the ground, hug your thighs together. If you want a little bit more, take your hands to your thigh, lift your shoulders up. That still feels good. Morning. Morning. Then you can lift your arms all the way up. Lift. My wife makes me do it. <laughs> He just asked me if I'm doing Tai Chi. And then the rest of the comment was, my wife makes me do it. <laughs> He's got a good wife. <laughs> Welcome to my neighborhood on the pier. <laughs> Last breath. Exhale. Did we forget all about that lunge? <laughs> Take your hands down. Take both hands the inside of that left foot. Roll your back toe under. Lift the knees strongly. So there's that strong back thigh. Walk your hands to the long edge of the mat. Toes forward. <clears throat> Press in. So bend your knees first and lift your hips up and back. Reach out through the spine and then take the thigh bones in and back. It can be on fingertips or blocks. We're gonna take a few breaths here again. Now see if there, it feels like there's more equality in the legs. They feel more similar. And if locking in just doesn't work for you, then take a little movement. You're more than welcome to bend your knees, right? That's the beauty of home practice. I can't see you. And if even, even if you were in my class, I could see you. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you need a little more movement, right? Two more breaths. Exhale, bow down, soft bend in the knees. Inhale, lift all the way up. And exhale, hands back to the heart. You can turn your toes out, heels in, and heel toe your feet together. That's kind of nice sometimes, or you can jump your feet together. <laughs> so that is my practice for today. Like I said, if you wanted it longer, you could do the semantics first, but that's our standing practice, a little proprioception, wake, wake up our balance. Take your hands to the center of the heart if you'd like. Thanks for joining me. Peace and love.